Okay, the headline of my lecture, Manipulation and Selective Reporting of Public Health Data, a Challenge to the Integrity of Public Health and Health Care Practice. Examples from Sweden. And uh, it's not from the Nordic, all the Nordic countries, oh, uh, only from Sweden. Yes. Okay, and this is the disposition, and I will start with a briefly talk about myself and the physician's appeal and the biomedical legal network. And then it's three parts, but they have converted it when they changed from another computer, but it should be one, two, and three. So three authorities that I will analyze. First of all, I will say it is really a great honor to have the opportunity to, to, to participate in this meeting and lecture, together with many people that I have followed over recent years and whom I consider heroes, heroes in the true sense of the word. And my background, I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist and a specialist from 2010. I have a broad experience in both inpatient and outpatient care. I have worked since 2015 as a consultant psychiatrist throughout Sweden. With a psycho psychologist have I parted participated in 400 to 500 now neuropsychiatric investigations. And uh, the last decade, I have participated in the public debate on general psychiatry and child and adolescent psychiatry in particular, including criticism of gender reassignment therapy for gender dysphoria in children and young adults. Uh, March the 12th of 2021, together with two colleagues, I launched Läkaruppropet, the Physician's Appeal, through an article in the national evening newspaper Expressen. And, um, <laughs> this is in Swedish, but uh, if you translate it, it uh, says, the headline, Stop the Harmful Corona Restrictions. And uh, we were inspired by the Great Barrington Declaration, and we had three main messages. Increase focus protection of at-risk groups. Reduce restrictions and discourage the introduction of vaccination passports. We, we received 5,300 supporting signatures in just one week, but from the mainstream media, there was silence. I, in order to reach more people, I asked all the signatory doctors and medical researchers if they would like to participate in influencing the official line, and this was the embryo of our future network. There were 30 of us, one of them being the immunologist and viro virologist Ann-Kathrin Engvall. And the first result of this was an opinion piece in the morning paper Göteborgs Posten on the 5th of May 2021. After just a few hours, the article was put behind the paywall. So we then published it in full on our website. Here it is, and it's First, it's um, Nils Litterin, one of the three founders of the Physician's Appeal, Ann-Kathrin Engvall, and, well, I don't have to mention who's that. And this headline, it's uh, Vaccinate Risk Groups Only, No Young and Healthy People. We had an immunological message. Sufficient to vaccinate high-risk patients, 
those that are 65 years older than 65 and those at risk. There is a high likelihood that the protective effect of mass vaccination is only temporary and that a previous infection provides better protection. People in general have good protection through cross immunity, immunity and past infections. No reaction, of course. And then lawyers joined the network in September 2021. We wrote a joint response to a draft law on vaccination passports. And now the biomedical legal network was created. And our aim is to promote a rational approach to the pandemic. Today, we are approximately 110 academics, 60 doctors, 49 of them, 49 specialists, and we are representing 20 specialities. 20 lawyers, 10 scientists in medical or related fields, 10 non-physician clinical health professionals, and 10 other academics. And from November 2021, the number of followers of our appeal on social media and the number of signatures increased. And we reached a peak at the end of January 2022 with 25,000 signatures. The milder Omicron variant caused the authorities to declare in February 2022 in a few months uh, that they would no longer be considered a dangerous to society, the infection. And that had consequences for us. Now restrictions were lifted, one of the objectives of the appeal fulfilled. So we had to have new object objectives. objectives. Closely monitor vaccine injuries was one of them counteract supranational bodies such as the WHO and the EU controlling the strategy for future pandemic control. Oppose the reintroduction of vaccine passports because they are discrimin discriminatory and lacking a medical basis. And to gain better reach, a non-profit association was formed the purpose was to also uh, promote uh, preventive health care. The possibility to receive donations since September 2022 have enabled ordering of data from the Public Health Agency and National Board of Health. We have pr provided a video interview with me with English, Spanish and Swedish subtitles. And you can look at it uh, there, um, at our website. You can find that interview and hosting of an international scientific conference on the COVID-19 pandemic in January 21st and 22nd of January in Stockholm. And some of the um, lecturers here will, will have already said yes to be at this conference. So you are welcome to Stockholm in January. Okay, then the first part of the, about the authorities, uh, agencies. From November 2021 to February, the journalist uh, Per Shapiro, an investig... Uh, yes, I... He asked critical questions at the weekly press conferences on COVID-19 by the Swedish authorities. And this was a collaboration with the physician's appeal on key issues. Uh, Shapiro's questioning went viral and the appeal posted short films that were viewed sometimes by over 100,000 people. And in particular, the public health agency was grilled with its representatives repeating the mantra that the vaccines were safe and effective without ever actually answering the journalists' questions. The authorities and the established media tried to censor and reduce the dissemination of Persepira's questions. 
So after a few press conferences, he was regularly asked to present his questions at the end of the media Q&A session. And this coincided with public service TV interrupting its live broadcast just before Per Shapiro was about to ask his questions. At the last two press conferences with Shapiro, the ignorance of the authorities was completely exposed. And it was subsequently announced that there would be no more press conferences. <laughs> and at the press conference on 27th of January 2022, Per Shapiro asked Britta Björkholm from the health, um, the public health agency, about deceased vaccinated persons being recorded as unvaccinated if at least 14 days had not passed since dose two was administered. Shapiro, so why are you clouding the real control group and when are you going to report on how the non-vaccinated have actually fared compared to the others? And uh, um, Britta Björkholm, she answered, and she was quite nervous. I don't know what to say. We have a lot of data, we have a lot of figures, we follow up in many different ways. I think we are transparent and report what is relevant. <laughs> we decided to dwell into the, this theme from the last conference uh, on inaccurate accounting by government, government agencies. And uh, the public health agency, uh, they have two groups, vaccinated, those who have taken two doses and at least 14 days have passed, and unvaccinated, completely unvaccinated, but also the vaccinated with one dose or two doses if less than 14 days have elapsed. What are the consequences? This is a hypothetical example. Uh, the mortality of an infection is evaluated, evaluated, uh, is evaluated over six months for vaccinated and unvaccinated, and it's 10,000 people in each group. And the outcome, 100 persons die of the infection before 14 days have passed after dose two. Five persons die in the vaccination group after at least 14 days have passed after dose two. And 25 persons die in the completely unvaccinated group. Well, then we have the mortality according to the agency and according to us. The agency, well, if it's five dead, it's in the, only five dead in the vaccinated group. Five of 9,900 because hundreds of the deaths before 14 days of dose two are transferred to the group of the unvaccinated. That gets a mortality of 0.05%. And in the unvaccinated group, there, there we have 125 deaths out of 10,100. And the mortality rate is high, 1.22%. But we think that you should count in an, another way. And if you do as we think, the mortality rate ra ra rises 21 times for the vaccinated from 0.05% to 1.05%. And for the unvaccinated group, it falls uh, oh, nearly fivefold lower to 0.25%. How many deaths have been reported incor incorrectly from the agency? Well, that's uh, of course very interesting because from the answers they had at the press, co press conferences, it seemed to be in single digits. And then, as in my example, mortality in the two groups would not be affected very much at all. So we ordered the data from National Registers on 30th of March of 2021. We had to pay a small amount, equivalent to 86, 86 euro. And we received an answer on the 11th of 
April. And now you can look at this. It was not just a single or very small amount. It was 666 persons, and those had received the first dose, and it was less than 21 days that had passed. And it was 253 that uh, that it was before that it hadn't got. It was before 14 days after dose two. And you can look here, the change. Here you have the agency and 919, reducing that, reducing with 32%. And the vaccinated groups, well, it's rise from that to that. It's, it's 135% higher. Yes. Uh, well, 666. You can you can um, think of how is the mortality rate in these groups, and we want to calculate that. So we have now ordered more data from the agency in smaller age groups and exactly when they got vaccinated, and that will cost us. 10,000 Swedish crowns, it's about uh, 1,000 euro. But it would take four to five months due to being so extensive. The last order took 13 days. Two months later, the processing time had increased 10 times. And after less than th uh, four months, we inquired, is the data on its way? At best, it would arrive before the end of the year, almost seven months after the order. Why? We handle orders in turn. The agency currently has several large orders from researchers and other government agencies that are both in process and in queue. As a result, the processing time is longer than usual. Do you believe that? OK, and now I will come to uh, the Swedish um, the Medical Products Agency. Sweden was one of the first countries to have a national population re register in 1631, and we are known for our transparent authorities that serve our citizens. And on the uh, website, um, they, they have published reported suspected side effects. And the citizen are given the impression that transparency exists, but is this reality? Here is it in English, so you can read some, some of it in English. And here you can see what they do. They, uh, this is the uh, most common uh, side effects that they uh, show at the website. Headache, fever, tiredness, feeling of sickness, menstrual disorder. And they seem to be very modest. And for the other vaccines, it's shields and muscle aches that is added. But it's nothing on the website about suspected serious side effects. This um, information is hidden in a PDF file provided for each of the four vaccines. And you can look at this. This is the PDF file, but it's not only in Swedish. So. so um, and if you dig in that, you will find something else. So we compare the numbers um, of SSSEs, suspected serious side effects reported by the agency, in the first year of the vaccination with the number of hospitalizations, including deaths due to SARS-CoV-2 in the first year of the pandemic. And we think these are comparable variables because according to um, the agency's website, the definition of a serious adverse event, it's a reporting con is con considered serious if the suspected side effect leads to death, is life-threatening, involves hospitalization or extended hospitalization, leads to disability, causes congenital malformation or other medically important event. 
And we present, presented our analysis in an article at the Brownstone Institute, signed by five authors. And um, then we calculated the numbers of SSSEs per person hospitalized or deceased with COVID-19. There are two Swedish studies of the reporting rate of adverse um, effects, and it's only one to two percent. So we don't know the exact reporting rate for COVID-19, uh, but uh, we assumed as for five, 10, and 25 percent, and then we could est estimate, and then we got this one. And you have to look at the uh, stacks, uh, the dark stacks, because the blue ones is for men, the red women, and the dark blue and the dark red, that's 5%. And then we, oh, then we also have um, um, green ones, and that's the cutoff, because if it's over one, then it's, uh, the vaccination is disadvantageous. And you can see, if you see at the dark, you can see it, that it's only here in one, one, one group. That is the only group that it's positive with vaccination. Men over 90. <laughs> uh, I, I go further because I have a... I go to this one. Uh, it's about... Um, Sweden statistics, and they announced in August, uh, yeah, almost turned, no, I muted it, uh, that uh, the birth rate was declining. It was the lowest since 2006, a decrease of 6.67%. And this is remarkable and should have resulted in a huge public interest and media coverage, but it didn't. And uh, only one media outlet wrote about it. But uh, the childbirth has remained low over the subsequent three months. And we have made the calcul calculation that we believe that the statistics Sweden should have made. We have performed a regression analysis for each, each month of the previous 10 years before 2022 uh, on the number of children born per 100,000 women aged 4, 18 to 45 years. And uh, we have thus obtained expected results for each individual month, January to September 2022, and compare them with the actual outcome. And then you can look at this. It's uh, falling in every month, and this last month, September, is, that's the worst, worst of all. It's 11.1% lower here, and in total it's 8%. And this is my last, however, we must put this in a proper context, and a historical perspective is needed. Uh, and I will show you the nativity from 1900 to 2021, and the expected results for 2022, and then you can see we have four uh, periods where it was very high. This was 1920 after the World War I and the Spanish flu, and it's three baby booms. And of course, after the high rate, you will have a, a decline that's uh, more um, falling, of course. But we have never, ever here we have this fall, it's not before, it was not a high rate before that, so, so this is exceptional, we have never seen it. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Sven.